Hello everyone, welcome to the Tech and Order show. I'm your host Manav Sinha and it is so good to see all of you lovely people once again. In case you're new here, well, welcome. This is that one show which brings you the best of both technology as well as automobiles at one place which basically means why should you be watching two shows when you can watch one? This one. Now just like every time, there's a lot of action that we have lined up for you guys. So let's kick things off by first showing you a glimpse of what you can expect over the course of the next half an hour. This week, we'll be taking you for a ride on the all-new Honda Hornet 2.0. And we'll take a look at the Fauci game that has come out right now. So there you have it, all of that will be coming your way, but we're going to start off with Honda motorcycles. You see, globally, Honda motorcycles is known for being really good at making sporty motorcycles and that's for decades and decades. The recent dominance in MotoGP, up until last year when Suzuki won the championship, has been won for the record books. But in India, they're known for playing it safe because they come out with well-mannered commuter motorcycles. Now, however, they have decided to turn things to 11 as they've come out with the Hornet 2.0 and they say it's sportier than before. Well, I got the keys to the motorcycle to find out myself. So this is the Honda Hornet 2.0 and it's been one of the most awaited motorcycles of the year 2020. And ever since it came out, you guys have been asking us a lot of questions as to how this motorcycle is to ride. Well, today we finally got the motorcycle with us. So without wasting any more time, let's dive straight into what this motorcycle is all about. Let's start with the design. It carries the familiar X-shaped LED tail lamps that the older Hornet had, but other than that, the Hornet 2.0 is truly an evolution of the design. The motorcycle looks a lot more bulky and sportier than before, and more importantly, it has got the stance right. A big reason for this new, more confident stance is the fact that despite having so much going on in terms of design, graphics and bodywork, the motorcycle is actually quite compact in dimensions. And then it has these wide tires front and back and when you couple that with a short exhaust and the high rising tank, you get the Hornet 2.0. Additionally, it gets features like LED indicators, LED headlamps, hazard lights and an all digital instrument cluster that shows everything you need to know. Now the next thing I want to talk about is how the motorcycle feels like once you're on it. First thing first, I can put both my feet firmly onto the ground and for reference, my height is 5 foot 10. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is that you have a familiar feeling when you're on the Hornet 2.0 as to what you got with the original Honda Hornet. Having said that, what I mean is that you have a very slim waist which actually makes you feel like the motorcycle is smaller than what it is. But right ahead of it, you have these humongous tank shrouds and in the cockpit view, everything is tightly, densely packed together, all of which combined makes you feel like you are on a bigger bike than what it is. Also, the fact that the key goes on top of the tank only adds to that experience. Now let's talk about how the Hornet 2.0 is to ride. The motorcycle's star attraction is the fact that it comes with these lovely looking upside down front forks which not only give better looks but add a lot of functionality to the bike as well. The Hornet is agile and is an efficient city traffic carver. And if you show it a set of long corners then the Hornet holds its line with confidence and lets you push hard till the foot peg scrape. It is very definitely a fantastic handling motorcycle. However, the suspension is on the stiffer side for this performance, so the trade-off is that the bike feels too taut when tackling bad road conditions. And the fact that it doesn't have a lot of suspension travel at the front means it will bottom out if you take a speed breaker enthusiastically. And that's no fun, is it? Powering it is an all-new 184cc single-cylinder engine that works like a typical Honda engine, which is to say that it runs butter smooth and is very tractable. In simple words, you don't need to change gears that often and no matter which gear you are in, you will have a defined riding experience. It can do 100 km an hour all day and it sounds rather nice too. Braking duties are done by disc brakes both front and back and while they have good bite and feedback, Honda has only given a single channel ABS which means the rear can lock up. But overall, the Hornet has managed to create a different riding experience in the segment one that will be liked by those who prefer enthusiastic riding. Well, now it's time to sum up the Honda Hornet 2.0 and in short, there's nothing really wrong with it. 
What I think Honda has successfully managed to do is that they have moved the Honda Badge from being a good commuter motorcycle to it being a good sporty package that you can buy in the Indian market. But coming to the buying part, you see the Honda comes at an expensive price tag, there's no really other way to put it. And because of its price tag, despite holding its own ground and having its own unique character and identity and all of that, it competes squarely against the TVS Apache RTR 204V and the Bajaj Pulsar NS200. Now, the Apache, for example, for a slightly bit more amount of money, is giving you things like adjustable suspension, Bluetooth connectivity, slipper clutch, so on and so forth. So at that position, it makes it difficult to justify buying the Hornet 2.0 and I think Honda has missed a big opportunity in that department. But coming to the motorcycle itself, once again, there's nothing really wrong with it. Now, like I mentioned at the start of the show in my review of the Honda 2.2, that we got a lot of questions from you guys about the review of their motorcycle, so we've brought you that. But another thing that you guys ask us a lot is which motorcycle should you be buying if you have a budget of about 2 lakh rupees? Well, Anirudh up next is listing down the top 5 that you can buy that you can select from based on your preference and convenience. Take a look. Now, without a doubt, 2020 was a difficult year for a lot of us. But if we are talking about the automotive scene, things were a bit brighter. For example, the implementation of B6 emission norms that led to the refreshment of all the products in the Indian market. Also, the introduction of several new products that were in a lot of ways game-changing. So as we wash up the bitter memories and enter a new year, we are expecting new experiences, new adventures, and if all things go well, new motorcycles in our garages. So we are here to make your job a little simpler by consolidating top 5 motorcycles that you can buy under Rs. 2 lakh in India. Yes, the Hero X-Pulse 200 is the first one on our list and with good reasons indeed. With our has-been roads and the need to find a motorcycle that doesn't break your back, adventure motorcycles are gaining immense popularity these days and sweetening the deal in the same segments are impressive and affordable offerings like the X-Pulse 200. The X-Pulse now stands as the most affordable adventure motorcycle in India. Coming in at Rs 1.15 lakh rupees at showroom, the motorcycle is a worthy entry point for anyone who wants to build their skills off the road, all while not cutting a hole in their wallet. The same holds after the purchase as the cost of servicing and the spare parts are one of the most affordable in this segment as well. The X-Pulse is powered by a 199.6cc engine that outputs 17.8 bhp and 16.4 Nm of torque. Suspension duties are carried out by telescopic units at the front with 190mm of travel and a 10-step adjustable monoshock at the rear with 170mm of travel. And for the ones who crave more adventure credentials, Hero is also offering an optional rally kit at Rs 37,000 that will dial things to 11 with better suspension, better seat, handlebar risers and more. Our days of squinting at spy shots came to an end when Royal Enfield finally launched the Meteor 350 in India last year. The motorcycle is essentially touted as a successor for the Thunderbird 350 but comes with all things new. Royal Enfield built the motorcycle on a brand new platform and graced it with a brand new engine. The same engine that you will soon see in the upcoming Classic 350. And that is a good news as well. So this is actually Royal Enfield's attempt at addressing the refinement issues that have been plaguing the 350cc offerings for quite a while now. The motorcycle is powered by a 349cc single cylinder engine that delivers 20.2 bhp and 27 newton meters of torque. The Meteor is being offered in three variants, which are distinguished by their paint options and a few other elements. Unlike its other 350cc offerings, the Meteor scores handsomely in terms of modern features, having elements like an LED DRL, USB charging, LED taillight, and a semi digital instrument cluster that comes with Bluetooth connectivity and turn by turn navigation. Prices for the Meteor begins at Rs 1.76 lakh X showroom for the base Fireball variant and goes up to Rs 1.90 lakh for the Supernova variant. The XG 
HD160R is Hero's first stab at the premium 160cc segment, the same segment which is currently dominated by the TVS Apache RTR160. But Hero has arrived with enough firepower in its side to make the rivalry a bit more interesting. The motorcycle gowns a brand new design language which is miles away from what we usually see from the brand. It gets features like all LED lightings, a fully digital instrument cluster. But that exactly not is what it's PS there is now. The motorcycle is powered by a 160cc air-cooled engine that produces 15 bhp and 14 newton meters of torque. And while the figures might not be on par with its segment rivals, it manages to make up with a low curb weight of a mere 138.5 kg. This kind of power to weight ratio means that the motorcycle comes with fun by the bucket load with an acclaimed 0 to 100 km per hour time of just 4.2 seconds. This also means that the bike can be a dear companion for those tedious urban commutes being agile and easy to operate. Prices for the motorcycle begins at Rs 1.05 lakh X showroom for the front disc variant and goes up to Rs 1.08 lakh X showroom for the double disc variant. Honda Hornet 2.0 is another anticipated product that we were waiting for eagerly in 2020. In its new avatar, the motorcycle now sports a bigger engine that displaces 184cc. Now, its predecessor, the Hornet 160R, was among the highest selling motorcycles for Honda, and it was not a bad idea to carry over its design ethos. The motorcycle now gets cleaner lines, a bulkier design, and we obviously cannot miss out on the golden upside down forks that give the motorcycle a premium appeal. There are other premium bits like the LCD instrument cluster, LED lighting and also some practical features like hazard switch. The Hornet 2.0 is powered by a 184.4cc BSX engine which develops 17.03 bhp and torque of 16.1 Nm. With both front and rear disc brakes, the Honda Hornet 2.0 comes with anti-locking braking system. The motorcycle is priced at 1.2 lakh X showroom in India. TPS Apache RTR 200 4-way is among the most sensible options in the 200cc segment in India. After its mandated switch to BS6, TPS graced the motorcycle with another update which led it to follow the same footsteps as its eldest sibling, the RR310. Yes, the motorcycle now gets riding modes which is highly unlikely for its segment. These riding modes include rain, road and sport which tweak the ABS intervention, the throttle input, the power delivery according to the wishes of the rider. The same update also gave the motorcycle new hardware. While the brake and the clutch lever are three-step adjustable, the suspension setup is sourced from Showa and gets preload adjustability. In terms of powertrain, the Apache 200 continues to be powered by the same 197.7cc single-cylinder engine that turns out 20.2 bhp and 16.8 Nm of torque while being mated to a 5-speed gearbox with a slipper clutch. In addition to the aforementioned, the Apache 200 also gets Bluetooth-enabled LCD instrument cluster that has connectivity as standard. So there it is, our carefully curated list of top 5 motorcycles that you can buy under Rs 2 lakh in India. Now as we conclude, we must say that the final decision lies with you, which means it is you who has to listen to your gut while you buy a motorcycle. It is you who has to go to the showroom and take a test drive before you make your final purchase. Welcome back, you're watching the Tech and Auto Show, I'm your host Manav Sinha and before going for the short commercial break, I promised you that once we're back, we will be talking about the game that a lot of people have been talking about right now. It's called 4G. And if it sounds familiar, that's because it rhymes quite a lot with PUBG. You see what's going on? Nevertheless, is it the game that you should be downloading and is this game worth going for? Well, Shashwat is telling you all about it up next. Hi guys, my name is Shashwat and welcome to this video where we're going to play 4G. I'm going to be sharing my honest opinion, my thoughts on the game. I'm very excited to play 4G. It's an Indian game. So without wasting any more time, let's see what Fearless and United Guards is made of.
So Fearless and United Guards is made by Encore Games and it is based in Bangalore. If you visit their website, you will find key people who hold important positions in the company. The size is 460 MB and it's rated 16 plus. Now let's check out the settings. So right now we have some basic settings. You can change the audio and uh, the graphic settings to up to ultra. I really like the character design. Most mobile games these days are not able to achieve that perfection, but in this game it's perfect. The game starts really well. It impresses you, but then once you start playing it, अचानक से वक्त बदल जाते हैं, जज्बात बदल जाते हैं, and then. The story goes on. At the time of making this review, I have played the game for one hour, and uh, initially I was very excited in the game while playing it, and धीरे धीरे वो excitement कम होती चली गई, and uh, I found myself tapping only one button to you know finish the game, finish a fight. I tried all kind of combinations, uh, timing के साथ वो button click करना, left, right, up, down, with these kind of combinations. If the character does a different move, but it wasn't there so after a while it felt like i was playing flappy bird which required only one tap the movement felt a little stiff to me we can only run straight diagonal running nahi hai however it's not like if a game doesn't have diagonal running then the game is bad but it just feels unnatural when you get surrounded by too many enemies you have to think ki kisko pehle attack karna hai so that you don't die and your health goes away very quickly two three blows and you are dead the story is amazing i loved the concept of the game being set in galwan valley and that has been shown really well the game starts with a bang and you really want to rescue your team but again when it comes to the actual gameplay experience forgy took me back to the 90s the cut scenes are good i really like the artwork i think it can be used again in the upcoming versions of the game if they are planning to further the storyline i think the game lacked in giving us a variety in movement basic things like jumping over fences or buildings or puddles climbing a little stealth could have been introduced in the game since it was a hand to hand combat and it could be very simple point and click stuff but it adds so much depth to the gameplay If you go by the storyline of Forge, you should know that it's based on the incident that happened in June in 2020 at Galwan Valley, and there is a pact between India and China that the soldiers patrolling there cannot use guns. So, if you go by the story, there should be no guns in the game, and that is exactly what the makers have done. However, there are more modes coming in the game, which is five versus five and uh, every man for himself. Usme, I think there can be guns. I think it was a good opportunity which could have been utilized better because the game was announced right after PUBG was banned so automatically logon ke dimag mein ye aa gaya tha ki we are we are getting an alternative to what we we just lost the game was named for G also strategically so that logon ki zuban pe chad jaye so people people were expecting an alternative to PUBG but it is not that at least right now जब तक बाकी मोड्स इंट्रोड्यूस नहीं होते इस गेम के अंदर इन कंक्लूजन आई लाइक लॉर्ड ऑफ आस्पेक्ट ऑफ द गेम इट इज अ ग्रेट स्टेप फॉर इंडियन गेमिंग इंडस्ट्री इन द राइट डायरेक्शन द गेम हैज डन मेनी थिंग्स राइट बट द स्टोरी मोड राइट नाउ इज नॉट गोइंग टू कंपेल मी टू पिक अप माई फोन अगेन एंड फिनिश द गेम एज अ गेमर आई एक्सपेक्टेड मोर बट एज एन इंडियन आई रियली लव दिस इनिशिएटिव स्पेशली बिकॉज हमारे सोल्जर्स जो हमारे लिए करते हैं उसको रिस्पेक्ट uh, देने के लिए उसको अप्रिशिएट करने के लिए अगर आप एक गेम बनाते हो देन दैट इज कमेंडेबल एंड ऑल्सो ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द प्रॉफिट्स आर गोइंग टू अ फाउंडेशन नोन एज भारत के वी सो दैट इज अ रियली गुड स्टेप बाय द मेकर्स एंड विद दैट वी कम टू द एंड ऑफ दिस एडिशन ऑफ द टेक एंड ऑटो शो हाउ डू डिफाइन द शो इज दर एनी थिंग यू हैव टू से एनी थिंग यू वॉन्ट आस टू कवर सिंपली वॉन्ट टू हैव अन्वर्जेशन विद अस रीच आउट टू अस ट्विटर वी मोर देन हैपी टू टॉक If it's about technology, you got to reach out to us at News18 Tech. If it's about automobiles, tweet out to us at News18 Auto. And remember, by logging on to News18.com, you can read up more on both these industries. Well, that's about all for today. I'll catch you same time next week, only on CNN News18.